I'm back out at the Pipewort Pond Nature Preserve today. I just decided to come back here and I love this place. This would be the third time I've been here in less than a week. But I love it. The second time I came, I didn't film. I came with a, a friend of mine and we took a long walk around the pond and we kind of went off trail into the woods and I'm gonna do that today the pond is right over there to my right behind all those shrubs it's still cold out today it's only supposed to be high in the lower 50s today. This area I'm entering into up here is a completely different type of environment. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to switch cameras. This is the path that I'm walking right now here. It fades away in a little bit and you can't see it anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of go off trail today. Just to pan around here and show you. This is the woods that I'm in today. You can see sky through on the other side. I know there's a big field over that way. But this right here is what I'm heading into. Today, I'm going to be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. The prophet says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. So, where can we get this water and this wine and milk without money and without price? We can get it from the Lord. We can get it from His Word. We can get it from the depths of His Spirit. I like the part where it says, Why do ye labor for that which satisfieth not? Isn't that the truth? You know, a, lot, a lot of people, me included, have uh, you know, gone to jobs that they hate, punch time clocks, and <laughs> do some menial task for somebody else that they don't really like doing, but they need to make money. That's what I was thinking of when I read that. labor for that which satisfieth not. But now, this whole passage here reminds me of John chapter 6. 
where the Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Aha. So there is the food without cost. The bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. The manna fell to sustain the Israelites, but uh, it didn't do anything for them spiritually, I don't think. <laughs> they, they actually got tired of eating it. But then he goes on to say, This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. He's speaking of himself. He's speaking of his word. He's speaking of what he was going to accomplish on the cross. The sacrifice of himself to save the entire human race. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that great? And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now see, he was speaking of his crucifixion. He was speaking of, of uh, his mission that he had to accomplish here. Okay, I have to get a shot of this here continuing on to get some different scenery in my video today. This is obviously an old plow and this tree, you can see it, this tree grew right around the axle of this plow. Just imagine how long it's been sitting there. I don't know. I can't see inside of it. Well, the bog is out that way. This is deep into the woods. That's the direction I'm going. This is the path that I'm following. It's not much of a path. Kind of a deer trail. And right out there is a field. It's a farmer's field out that way. Let's see if I can zoom into it. I guess so. This is obviously a plow that was once owned by the farmer who farmed this land. I came upon this hidden pond here in the middle of the woods. Way back that way is where the bog was at. And then over here, we have the open field, which goes for a long way. But, I came upon this little hidden pond here, in the middle of the woods. Okay, now going back to my text. This is Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. The sure mercies of David. Hmm. What I would think about that is how God had mercy on David in so many different things. The sure mercies of David. But David was a man after God's own heart and he chose him and he obeyed him a large majority of the time, but he wasn't perfect just like anybody isn't. 
So there he's promising us an everlasting covenant. The sure mercies of David, which means they're definite. It's for sure. Verse 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Uh -huh. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew thee not shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. That's something. He's talking to the nation of Israel there. That's the way I would take that. Verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah. Well, there he kind of explains it. That's the sure mercies of David. That also belong to us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So there you go. <laughs> that is the bread that comes down from heaven, right there. In verse 10 where he said how the rain comes down and the snow and returns not, but it waters the earth that it may bring forth in bud. Just like the water came down, and watered all these trees and the grass and it feeds the birds and all these things grow out of it. He's comparing that to the word that goes forth out of his mouth. The bread that comes down from heaven that is only available through Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. So by him, through his sacrifice, through the sacrifice of his body, the bread of life. We are watered and we grow up into an everlasting plant of the Lord. Not a plant, but I'm comparing it to that. <laughs> and he says that the things that go forth out of his mouth will not return to him void. And it will accomplish what he wants it to accomplish in the earth. Verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I made my way out of the bog, and now I'm sitting in the grass, just enjoying the quiet here. Let's pray. Oh Lord, I just want to thank you today for supplying seed for the sower. And there might be bread for the hungry. We thank you for your word, which is the bread of life, oh Lord. We thank you for the living water that pours down and helps us to grow into that which you 
made us to be and what you've destined us to be. Lord, we just love you and we give you glory in all things. We praise your mighty name. Lord, I ask that you'd bless my friends and help them that they may grow by your word and give them that living water and that bread of life. We just thank you for it, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm signing off for today.